It's three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackie, who didn't do s***. This is the O-Line Committee. Happy Draft Month, gentlemen. It is draft month. It is April. The ro- it feels like the kind of the calm, but between the storms, right? Free agency. Oh yeah. First wave is done. Yep. You got all these all these pro days. The quarterback pro days. Michael Penix finally did his, and Jaden Daniels. So we're 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 sitting right so in the close. middle of it right now. Gentlemen. So close. Welcome yeah. back to the coffee gang, Alex Boone. <sighs> Dude, can we're I back. just say we made it through Easter. Boone's back on the coffee back. grind. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the coffee grind. Not that I needed it, but it is incredible. You always, it. Dude, you always it's need so coffee. Good. It's so good. Do you just have an <laughs> IV going into your left bicep you, right now? Or? You have no idea, dude. It's been incredible. I'll tell you what, though. I think I'm swearing off monsters forever. I think I might oh, have dude. to. That's I do. Well, I might have to. Absolute lie, dude. Listen, dude. listen, 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 listen. I'm really concerned about them. I've been reading about them, and they're not good. They are Should not be. good for you. I'm just going to be okay. fucking straight, dude. Nothing in the quantity in which you drank them. Is oh. good for you, dude, dude. You would have like four six a day, a day. dude. Yeah, six. That's not good for you. What, dude? Literally six a day during we'd the be, summer. We'd be driving was... home at nine p.m. <laughs> and I'd be like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna go right to bed." It affected him zero. zero. <laughs> what? I just like the taste of it. But my, I was talking to my kids, and I was like, "Guys, I think I'm gonna get off." And even they looked at me like, "Guys, uh, are you okay?" Uh, they take shaded. that time that I go to the gas station to like, they'll be like, Dad, can you get me gum? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, God. So now yeah, they're I'm- pissed I'm quitting. They're like, are we still going to go to the gas station? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Dad needs gas, silly. I'm pulling open monster energy drink ingredients here real quick. So I mean, it's not, it's not it's, what you want. It's not great. Dude, first of all, uh, one can of monster energy drink is 27 grams of sugar. No, 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 no. He gets ultra. the sugar. Free. I do the ultra. It's ultra watermelon. Dude, ultra Boone's watermelon. an ultra watermelon guy. The best. And he will get two to three at a time. And I know was, this because I bought them for him. Oh, I've dude. got. I'm like, hey, Jay I'm running by the gas station. You need anything? Yeah, get me uh, a can of Copenhagen and <laughs> three sure. watermelon monsters. <laughs> and then we'll hey, swing man. back by on the way to get my afternoon session. To get my afternoon cans in. The zero ultras. Okay, but how much? There's caffeine in these. Yeah, people, oh, yeah. Se- people sensitive <laughs> yeah. to caffeine should what? avoid. How many milligrams of caffeine are in these? I think it's like 200, right? <laughs> Probably so closer you, to three. Yeah, it's like two. So you're drinking like 2,000 milligrams of caffeine. I mean, does this surprise anyone when I told you about the time he drugged me? Like he drugged me <laughs> That's with. Right. He drugged me with a caffeine pills before practice. Right? He's like, here, I take like four of these. 2,000 milligrams before an 8 a.m. practice or an 8 p.m. practice. Hey, hey, you got to be moving, dude. Hey, if you're off them, I'm happy for you. I dude, do. you I know think, what? Thank you. It's a, thank you. It's you, you and Dan Campbell remain the same person. So glad oh, you guys got sure. to meet at the combine. So Dan Campbell apparently starts his day during the season. He gets up at like 4.30, whatever. He goes to Starbucks and gets two venti-sized coffees. Which have 410 milligrams of caffeine in each one. Well, that's just, just literally if it's like regular Stone coffee. Cold Steve right. Austin. That's just the, if it's regular just coffee. Just to start his day. At but that, that doesn't even know if that's like the, the secret of drinks. Like I've stumbled across the hazelnut shake and espresso drinks at Starbucks, where it's just five shots of espresso with a little bit of a little bit of hazelnut and oat milk in there, and that's a great way to start. Is that day. why you get it? I was yeah. wondering. I go, why is he getting this oatmeal drink? Like, what is Dude, this? It's and all the- freaking great. Jittered. It's four shots of espresso right to the dome, shaking mm. on ice. Sign me up for that. Now I sound like an absolute wuss ordering it. Right? Sound like a I'll chip. have yeah. a venti. Do you want some shake pumpkin spice espresso, in there? <laughs> two pumps hazelnut with uh, an extra shot, please. What's your name, sir? Uh, Jeremiah. J E R. Do you have rewards with us, sir? No, I do not. Now just give me my coffee before someone sees me. Just give me my coffee quickly. Oh, this dude. I was wondering six, that when I ordered it, I go, monster. I don't even feel right ordering this thing. Yeah. I go, can I get the shaken hazelnut espresso? But uh, it's, for, it's for my wife. I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's for my friend. Well, that's like my, wife's like my wife's like a venti shaken pistachio cold Ooh. foam cream. And I'm hey. like, I, don't, I don't even know what we're doing. Have you had what? the pistachio? Okay, well, Have you had it? I haven't, no. What's harder to remember, an NFL play call with a check on the end of it or your wife's Starbucks Starbucks. order? For sure, Starbucks. Because if you screw that up, you're getting just as much trouble as you screw up any. You screw up a protection you're getting screamed at. You screw up that coffee order, dude. 
you might as well not even come home. So true. You you might Dude, as well seriously. you might as well have pulled her heart out and stomped all over it and been like, She'd yep. be like, hey, did you forget the cream? Did you ask him for cream? And you're I literally said cold foam. Hey, the thought <laughs> runs through my, your head. I swear I fucking asked. I don't know what happened. But, dude, protections are way easier because you can always ask your friends. Here are we two or three? Are we going two jet or three jet? Yeah. Did she want the lemonade with the dragon fruit refresher yeah. or no? God. God. I've, actually, I've actually had my wife, like, record herself ordering it before so that I can, like, listen to it beforehand. And, like, like it's like the headset and the helmet, right? Like, venti, cold foam, pistachio. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> I think it I'm should ready. be like in a real NFL game where the headset cuts out yeah. after like 15 seconds. Oh God, panic! Shit. Oh God, <laughs> kill it! Kill, kill, kill! Oh man. Anyways, welcome to the O line committee Anyways. here, where we have now 19,000 YouTube subscribers. Woo! Thank you, Dude, guys. huge. Appreciate you guys. Love it. Yeah, we're gonna get. By the way, we're adding a segment here. We always usually ask a question to start the show. We're gonna officially call it the first segment of the show, the big boy question of the week here, which we'll get to. We'll identify some mics. We got some dumb football questions. Uh, the best things you guys can do to help us grow this show. We're at what? We're like eleven months, ten months into uh, this show. We launched it in the middle of the off season last year. Uh, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. And also give us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify on the audio side. And uh, when you're giving us that review, don't forget to leave us your favorite obscure all-time offensive lineman. Yeah. We have a few that we're going to get to in the dumb football questions portion of the show here. You can follow us on any social media platform at O-Line Committee. And we have merch, offensive line lifestyle merch, over at olinecommittee.com, gentlemen. So here's the big boy. Question of the week. Oh, spreads mm. are for losers. Jay's mm. got the Gotta spreads. Gotta have it. That a boy. So soft. It is it soft. Is. It's very, very buttery. It They're is. very comfortable. Feels good. Yeah. You never know. Sometimes you know you, you get the yeah. merch and you want to make sure it's comfortable for yeah, people. Yeah, it's good. We feel no, good about the great. quality. Big, big boy approved. So uh, here's the big boy question of the week. I want you guys to stick a flag in the ground and identify oh, nice. your sleeper NFL team. Now, sleeper could mean one of two things. I'm going to define it one of two ways. It could be a team that's already pretty good that not enough people are talking about as a contender to get to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Or it could be a team that people think is going to be pretty garbage this season that you think is going to make a surprise run to the playoffs. Those are kind of the two the two bins, the two definitions of sleeper here. So okay. we'll, we'll start with Jay. Give, yeah. give us yeah. your, your sleeper team right you know, now. I don't know if this is a fair sleeper team to pick because of the success that they had last year, but the Houston Texans. Just stole no, mine. I, I really do. I mean, here's my thing. We stole all agree. Too. That was going to be we a all agree. Yeah, but I mean, I, you hear about the Chiefs and you hear about the Bills and you hear about Josh Allen, Mahomes, and, and even even uh, Cincinnati with Burrow, right? And you hear about the kind of elite quarterback play, but no one is, in the national eye at least, in my opinion, is talking about how C.J. Stroud is going to take a next step and be better than all those guys next year, right? Because I planted the flag last year, C.J. Stroud, MVP, right? I planted that flag on this podcast middle of December last year, but I still think it's true. I think they go out and, you know, they brought in Joe Mixon, which is going to be a massive, massive help for them in the run game. Mm -hmm. I think they probably draft him another weapon. Right, I mean Tank Dell's coming off the the ACL, but you go get a you go find your way to maybe Brock Power falls down to, down to them at one point. You know I know they had Dalton Schultz they just extended, but you know they made some moves on the defensive side to to get some get some pass rushers there too. On next to Will Anderson, you go you go lose you did they did lose uh, Reader. You know, I think Reader ended up going to Cincinnati. They lost Grenard to the Vikings, but, to but the then Vikings. they grabbed yeah. Daniel Hunter grabbed Daniel from Hunter, right? Hunter. So it's just kind of same, same, Hello. right? Just a little mm. trade ski. Maybe an upgrade. Yeah, maybe an upgrade, too. But I really love what the Texans done. I love what D'Amico Ryans is doing down there. Fantastic coach. But I think that they have all the tools set up but going against an AFC South division that, you know, is kind of new. Right, you're getting okay. Is Anthony Richardson gonna be able to stay healthy the whole time in Indianapolis? What's Tennessee gonna look like? Right, they're all brand new too. So, so much Jacksonville is. I don't know if they're gonna be able to get out of their own way. Right. I mean, last year, I planted the flag with them, and no tattoo. I'm not willing to go tattoo bet on them yet. I think I that's will. still 
That's a little. That's a little aggressive. Wow. Oh, you're ready to go tattoo back? Yeah, Booney's one sure. upping your answer, dude. You got to. You just. You just said it though. Think about that division. Like if Anthony ah, Richardson dude. doesn't come out hot, yeah, out but the I gate, don't. I really don't want a Texans tattoo on my neck. <laughs> Like no, badly. Dude, said you got, listen, I'm, you're so crazy. You go right to the neck. Like that's dude, what, put that it on was your the ass bet. Cheek. The bet was the freaking. Did we? Did we say neck? I don't think no, we said. Not I, think you, I think you. I'm said not getting neck. divorced sure because you, you guys want to see a tattoo. <laughs> that's not going to happen. But I will say this: you just said it. The division. Like one of the things about being a sleeper team is you have to be able to win your own division. Correct. And when you talk about one of these divisions, like it'd be easy for someone to come in and be like, "Oh well, the Oakland Raiders are going to be my." It's like, okay, well, have you not seen who they're going to have to fight to get through there? That's silly. But you talk about Houston, and they're in one of the divisions that's kind of like this is up for grabs right now. Oh, and by the way, we have a super solid young core. And our head coach is super awesome, and he's young, and he's into this right now, and we're about to go crazy. And you just said it. Joe Mixon and Daniil Hunter, dude, you're starting to add pieces to weapons of guys that know what they're doing in this league. Like guys that are super tough. Daniil Hunter is one of the best in the NFL at getting sacks. Joe Mixon is one of the toughest running backs in the NFL. Like you're talking about two guys that are going to add and contribute to this team of a nucleus that has already gone crazy. So it is kind of like, is it going to be Anthony Richards or is it going to be Houston? Like, right. what's going to happen? And that's honestly because I do feel like you, like you said, Jacksonville, are you going to get out of your own way? I don't know, man. Like, you guys had it all cush last year, and then all of a sudden the wheels yeah, fell I mean, off. It was, and a, and it a was lot your of that, division last year. Right. And a lot of that came from your quarterback took too many hits. Like, it's the same thing every year. We always talk about this, and this is what drives me nuts is how every year we always talk about this team didn't do well because their quarterback took too many hits. Like, he just couldn't withstand the season. He was getting obliterated. At one point last year, we broke down their film, and we were like, dude, we just can't even watch this anymore. Like, this dude's getting tattooed from every which way. <laughs> he had to carry himself up the up the, up the the uh, ramp, remember? Like, we all watched it for, like, 10 minutes, and we are like, somebody just help him. Somebody dude, send just. the cart, man. Right? Send the cart. Uh, it was just a lot. But that's to me, is why I'm like, yeah, Houston is one of those sleeper teams that could jump in there out of nowhere. But it's, it's the thing is not that they're going to come out of nowhere anymore. Everyone sees the them thing. coming. It's just they hit all the – I don't know. What were we going to say? They hit all the the benchmarks to be like, yeah, we're, we're there now. This is who we are, and then we're going to run this division for a while, which is crazy because, dude, if you think about it, Houston ran that division for a long time. They just couldn't do anything in the playoffs. Like they were one of those teams that in the year you were like, ah. A tough team. They got in the playoffs and lost every wild card. You were like, what the hell? Like five years in a row, and you're like, why are these guys just not doing it? Now you see this team, and you're like, okay, I get it. They're young. They have a great coach. They're excitable to watch. They're really fun. What's going to happen? They get in the playoffs. They start going. You're like, wow, this is what's up. That's why, to me, that's I, I'm tattoo bet all the way. Wow. Put, so you're, oh, yeah. I just wanna, you're like, taking, to be you're clear. Taking, you're taking tattoo bet in freaking April 2nd? Let's go, bro. Let's go. <laughs> I just want to be clear about what you guys are saying here. Because, so again, the two definitions of sleeper team are a team that people think are going to be garbage. So last year, they would have fit the, mm -hmm. ah, they're going to be garbage, rookie quarterback. You know, it's you know, D'Amico Ryans. We don't know about him. And, oh, they pop up and they become a playoff team. You're saying they're going to go from, hey, they got into the playoffs, nice little taste, and AFC Championship game AFC, Super AFC Bowl Championship is on the Super table Bowl. for them. 100%. Yeah. I mean, you look yeah. at you look around like Buffalo had to blow up their team, right? Buffalo had to blow up the Kansas City, and we'll get to it. I mean, we've got issues in Kansas City again. Big um, issues. Big question marks on Joe Burrow if he's back to what he is and how he wants to be, right? And you start looking across the AFC West or the AFC, like they're right there. I think they yeah. they are just as talented, if not more talented, than some of those teams. I think they are one hundred percent AFC Championship Super Bowl contenders. Okay. I want to give you – so you guys are both Houston Texans. Uh, I don't disagree, by the way. I think C.J. Stroud, you jump in like that. I don't think that was a fluke. Maybe there's like a little bit of a second-year dip or something. But um, I'm going to give you my team. I want to stump for the Jaguars for just a second. They're not my official team. But I feel like people forget that team was 8-3 and three before mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence's high ankle sprain. Yeah. And they were, they were right at the top. They were fighting for home field advantage in the AFC. So he suffers a high ankle sprain, grinds through it. He winds up throwing like seven interceptions in December. And so I feel like there's a lot of people, because not a lot of people are just entrenched in Jaguars week-to-week -week storylines that kind of look at the big picture of their season and say, well, Trevor Lawrence threw a bunch of interceptions and they collapsed down the stretch and, you know, classic Jaguars. And there's even some talk about maybe Lawrence is a bust, you know, relative to it. Dude, that, 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 when they were, when they were eight and three, nobody was talking about them that no. way. They were, they were being talked about as an AFC championship team. So to be I fair, want to stump for them. 
No, I agree. And Jay, you we were you were on them last year, and for a minute there, I got time. nervous for it. I got nervous for you. Yeah, like I was no. kind of like, dude, you're screwed. But listen, <laughs> we've talked about this, and we get caught doing our own things. If you're crowning a team within the first ten weeks of the season, you're an idiot. Because we all know that the first 10 weeks are just the wake-up session. And then it's, what do you do in November and December and now into January? Like, what do you do then? And that's why it's at times you're like, that could be a good sleeper team. But it's, do they get out of their own way? It's the same thing with them every year. The quarterback is constantly taking too many hits. They can't put up enough points. The defense is running wild. Like, dude, back in 2013 when they were good, we played them. Their team was led by their defense. Like, they were just legit on the field. I remember we played them in – we played them in Arizona, and I remember we were playing their defense, and, dude, that game went down to the wire. And it was the most physical, ridiculous fight you ever got in. But it was kind of like, this is why this team is good. And then that whole defense got disbanded. Blake Bortles was their quarterback. Like, it was like, dude, this is crazy. Remember they went to, the was it Pittsburgh, right? And they beat Pittsburgh in the playoffs, and then they went and they lost to the Bills. Dude, that was like the last time and probably maybe the only time the Jaguars have been really relevant in the last 15 years. And since then, it's been the same issues. They just can't do it enough. And you're but, like, but dude, they, tre- but, but they what ha- have they tre- done in free agency? Trevor Lawrence, I think Trevor Lawrence is still one of the 10 best quarterbacks in the NFL. Oh, Take away the hand. For sure. And, and Doug Peterson, I know the, the collapse in Philadelphia and the way it ended, but Doug Peterson once was a, not that long ago, dude, a Super Bowl champion, offensive guru, head coach. Like, right. You know, let's just what is, let's see what happens. My question is, what have they done in free agency, though, to make you think that they're going to be this? They, so that... they lost Calvin Ridley, um, which is huge to, to get Josh Allen back and not mm-hmm. have a big issue there, I think, is is paramount. But you still have Kirk. I mean, Kirk was really cute. was wide receiver one there. Like Ridley was the one that took the top off the defense, but when when it came nut cutting time, Trevor Lawrence was yeah. looking for Christian Kirk. They added oh, Eric, they added Eric Armstead um, after he was released from the 49ers, right? They That's in the terms 49ers of Forty Niners crew, Gabe, down Gabe there. Davis jumps in as Ooh, I don't know a number a good one two point five three receiver. He's probably gonna um, be a two two. I mean, he was he he'll be a two. Yeah, Ronald Darby, Darnell Savage. By the way, Mac Jones as a backup quarterback with oh, look Johnny was Can just talking to me about that game? yesterday. He, he Johnny was like, "Dude, I feel bad for Mac Jones," and I was like, "Why?" He was because like, it's a backup now. I go, "That's how it goes, dude. Like if you don't <laughs> if you don't win games, you can't be the starter." And he was like. I just feel bad for him. <laughs> He's like, going to look great with a backwards hat holding a clipboard, dude, oh, oh, headset, fine. helping Trevor Lawrence during the a timeout. Piece, just, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, Dude, yep, sounds good. Sounds good. Yep, the yep, best yep. life ever. But yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I guess give, I can I mean, see that. I'm going to give you my my real sleeper here. And again, oh, I, yeah. I, this is this is a team now that has to be like NFC Championship level for it to qualify. Give me the youngest team since the NFL expanded the regular season to 16 games in 1978. The youngest team, period. The Green Bay Packers. Uh, mm-hmm. So according to StatHead.com, boy. Oh, God. The Packers are one of only two teams since 1994 yep. to reach the playoffs with three or fewer players over the age of 30 on their roster. Oh they were they were a fringe top 10 scoring offense last year. Dude, if I would if I were to say don't even like I'm not even going to give you the name of the quarterback, but there's a team of a rising team with a really young roster and their quarterback threw for 4200 yards, 32 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, a passer rating that was just outside the top 10, QBR top 10, you'd be like, yeah, he's mobile. He's got a huge arm. He's got cojones to make throws in tight windows. Jordan Love, man. Yeah. And nobody was talking about him like this in October for good reason because he didn't yeah. really click until he, November. Yeah, yeah. He, didn't, he did not have a great start to the year. But the way that they finished the year and the way they went down there and just throttled Dallas. I mean, just Hello. throttled yeah. Dallas. And you're sitting there going, "Oh shit, these dudes are, these dudes are for real, right?" And you talk about them adding some pieces in the draft again. I mean, it's because they have cap room now because Bakhtiari's gone, yep. right? He was eating a big chunk of the cap just sitting on the bench, right? So there's a lot of cap room for them now to kind of wiggle around and do some things. I I agree with you, Mackie. I think they're dangerous. I think the the NFC North is theirs for the taking, right? You talk again, it's Detroit and Green Bay. Right, you don't. That's going to be the clash of the NFC North. Yeah, it is. The Vikings are in trouble. The Bears are. Who knows what they're going to do with Pink Nails, and you know, just kind of figure it out as we go. But it's fun to watch 
a young quarterback come into his own in real time. And that's what we got to see last year, right? We saw the struggles. We saw Matt LaFleur be able to stick with him, really tailor it to what he needed to succeed with, and then to go all the way. And, yeah, that's that's going to be a fun team, and it's going to be interesting to see if they can continue to keep that flash in the pan they had in December of last year in January. And Can they keep growing with that, or is there a little step back to get back to that? That's kind of going to be how hot out the gate do they come. And not only that, but how well does Josh Jacobs play for them? And how much of a low does he take off of Is Jordan he that Love? much better than Aaron Jones? Well, that, I mean, that's the thing. I, well, I don't know. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. I think he's when they're younger. looking he's at like, this, He's like four years younger, which, that's what which they might see. be what they're and aiming they, for. I think they see like someone that can counter this A.J. Dillon, this big back that can do a lot of things. And you're looking at it like maybe he can take off a little bit more. I agree with you. I think that um, uh, not A.J. Dillon, but um, Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones was phenomenal towards the end of the year. Yeah, he was hurt in the middle of it, and it was kind of sucked that he wasn't playing. But towards the end, he was fine. But I think that this is something internally that they were like, hey, we can get younger at this position and a guy that could possibly take on a little bit more for us and take a little bit more off of Jordan Love. Let's do it. Like maybe they see something or maybe they're changing their scheme, whatever it is. But to me, that's going to be a big question because you're right. The Lions are kind of one of those they're teams. Kings. You, you dude, they're they're young too, by the way. You have they're to dethrone young. the king, and they were the and king last year. The problem is, though, the Lions will fight you to the death. So it's like, this is going to be a clash of titans, technically, towards the end, because you're right. Like, Are the Bears going to be good with Caleb Williams? We don't know. It's too too early to tell. Who knows what's going to happen? You have two great receivers and Swift in the backfield. It'll be interesting. The Vikings, I agree with you, Jay. I think it's going to be an interesting year. I don't see them being on top of it. So it really just leaves the Packers and the Lions, and it's like, dude, this is the black and blue division for a reason. This is going to be fun to watch. I mean, I could see the NFL Sunday night football opening Packers Lions. <sighs> oh, right? Let's like, do you, you, you can Here's see, a guy. Uh, right. Here's a guy. I mean, tell me you can't see that, right? Tell me you can't Inject see Jordan it Love in my veins. Off Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night of opening week. Like for that's, sure. That's in Lambo, sure, going to be an oh. opener, or it's going to be a primetime game every time they play. Yeah, Collins were sliding in with that goofy right. grin on his face. Uh, it's good to be alive, <laughs> Mike. Take him out of freezing for four months a year. <laughs> All right, back it. into your hydro caver. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other thing I think Packer fans would say, what's funny is. You know, they, they actually finished top 10 in scoring defense in terms of just points per game allowed. But if you drill down deeper into some of those games, just some of the blown defensive, like the game-winning oh, drives they would give up. And yes. That's why man, Joe Barry like, got the kick to the yeah. curb. A hundred percent. Even after the the playoff success, you know, Joe Barry was just kind of you know, walking dead for the last six weeks of the season. So they wind up, they go out and they grab Jeff Halfley, the former head coach of the of Boston College, the last four years he's their new defensive coordinator he spent time with the san francisco 49ers a few years ago as a d-backs coach the browns he's, he's got a bunch of nfl experience not as a coordinator but you know what does that look like defensively do they get better late in some of these games i think packer fans are thrilled that they made that yeah, change we'll have to yeah. see if it actually translates but well that's what you worry about when i mean when you know that that's a glaring problem right and everyone did at, at the end of the year everyone was like man this defense has got issues Right, and then you go have the success that you have in the playoffs. Everyone gets a little nervous, like, well, should we fire him? Right, like, <laughs> like he kind of showed up when it mattered. Like, like obviously yeah. we didn't win at all, but I think every fan base, like the Packers fan base, at the end of that playoff run, butthole puckered, like, please, please don't let me get a Twitter notification, like, extended <laughs> Joe Barry, right? Like that was everyone wanted me. So hats off to the front office of saying, hey, this is an issue. We got to fix this, and if we want to be a championship team, we're going to address it. Yeah. So, all right, those are sleeper teams right there. Those are this is kind of the the groundwork being laid for the neck tattoo oh, yeah. declarations oh. later in the the off season, boys. We're, we're getting there. It's good. Uh, close. Let's go around the room here and identify some mics. And I, I feel like we should take a step back too. There's people I see in the comment section just, who are maybe new to the show. To like, this. what is a mic? Why don't you guys explain? What is a mic so, and why do we do a who's the mic segment? So as you know, this is an offensive line lifestyle podcast. Mm. And mm. the mic, meaning the middle linebacker when we're describing it, rules majority of our lives during a football game. Because as an offensive line, we have to come up and identify, hey, 57's the mic or 54 is the mic. And then that allows everyone else around us to create their count based off what play it is, based off what the protection is. Like everything starts from that moment that the center comes up and declares who the mic is, right? So when we say who the mic, all we're saying is that is a big-time 
um, identification that we need to talk about. Right, we need to understand, and we need to know why that guy right there is the Mike linebacker, and then we can feed off of that. So that is why we say, "Who is the Mike?" Um, we identify the Mike on every single play, and so that's why we do it every single week. It's the most important thing to us, by far. Who's the Mike? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw it out. Let's just start doing. You, you do guys it. want to talk about this? We're so. gonna do it. And we've got it. We I can't imagine being his agent and oh. you know, to have our resident agent on the Dude, show, Jay. Jeremiah. It's the oh, first yeah. thing I text you guys on Easter morning. <laughs> Rasheed Rice is the Mike to start mm-hmm. us off here. He's the Mike this week, for it's sure. Be. For those of you who haven't maybe followed this story you closely in the last few days, <sighs> police officers were called to North Central Expressway in Dallas at 6.25 p.m. Saturday after two speeding drivers lost control and crashed, causing a chain reaction collision involving four other vehicles. So the drivers were in a Corvette and a Lambo. One of the cars was leased or registered to Rasheed Rice. Kansas City star breakout wide receiver, the Corvette, by the way. Uh, The occupants of the Lamborghini and the Corvette all ran from the scene, and there is video of this too, without stopping to determine if anyone needed medical help or providing their information. Here's the statement from Rasheed Rice's attorney, Royce West. On behalf of Rasheed Rice, his thoughts are with with everyone impacted by the automobile accident. Rasheed is cooperating with local authorities and will take all necessary steps to address the situation responsibly. Any and all requests for comment can be directed to his attorneys, Mr. Royce West of West and Associates, LLP. Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome to the offseason, Kansas City. <laughs> unreal, dude. dude. Unreal. So I, I, swear didn't, to God. I didn't see the story until Easter morning. Like, that's kind of when everything kind of broke. And all I could think about was like, thank God I'm not his agent. Right? Because you imagine waking up Easter morning, you're like, oh, he has risen. He has risen indeed. He has defeated death. Where's my family? And you look at your phone, you've got a hundred missed calls. Like some of them, you got to like check the voicemail. It's like, uh, hello, this is the uh, Dallas Police Department. We're currently looking for your client, Rishi Rice. Have you heard from him? He's currently missing. Would love to call you back. You call Rice, no answer. Text him, what's going on? Like, family's getting ready for church, and you're like, I'm not going to make it. No. I'm going to be busy. Right? Like, just, I could not imagine getting one of those calls and trying to figure it out. Or better yet, you like, you get a call from Rice, like, hey, walked away from an accident. What do you think I should do? I don't walk know. Walk back. Walk, walk back. back. Do go that. back. <laughs> like, yeah, they have you know. on pictures, too, and video walking away, and you're just like, yeah, I'm walking away. No <sighs> one saw me. No one saw me. Did you leave your car? Yeah, 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 yeah. Idiot. It's called a license and registration. It's called they a just go, number. Oh, yeah. That belongs to that guy. Like, you can't get out of this. There's no way. Like, I don't understand. I've never understood the idea of running from the accident. Like, Dude. in today's age, they're going to know. It was you. Dude, there's, like, there's a guy no hiding. that asks him as they're walking away. You're just going to walk away from this? You're just going to walk away? And there's like a, somebody filming them. Like, Yeah, they've got their phone out. Like, where are you going? And like, oh, I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, just, I got to go grab my, my wallet. Fell out. Yeah. I just, <laughs> dude, I don't get it. I'm sorry. I don't. Like, you're in such a major position right now for one of the greatest teams in the NFL with one of the greatest leaders and one of the greatest but, I mean, head coaches. It just doesn't make any sense It doesn't to even like, matter. That. It's, you're in the NFL. I don't care if you're on the Chiefs, the Bucks, the Raiders. Like, I mean, Henry Ruggs, this was an issue a couple of years ago. Like, You just have to understand it's not worth it in that moment. It's not. Like, it's not worth throwing away what you've worked your entire life for to street race your buddy. In a Corvette or a Lamborghini, you want to race cars? Go to Vegas. You can race get, them. Get on, it. Get us. Go, go to Vegas. It. We did it. It was fun. Cars, it was dude. insane. It's fun, dude. It's go so fun. It. Don't do it on the freeway no. or the expressway where you could literally kill someone else. Like that's the part, and you, you just feel bad for him in a sense of like it, it was a mistake and it was an accident and it could ruin his career. It could not. Time will tell. But you know, I'm glad no one was killed. First yeah. of all, like I mean, I know there was injuries and whatnot, but also have the balls to come out and make your own statement right don't don't hide for two days right like literally go underground like osama bin laden and you're hiding in a cave and then all of a sudden send out your attorney with this half ass like on behalf of rishi rice his thoughts and prayers with everyone he's gonna handle this responsibly like 
No, he isn't handling it responsibly. We're, we're a little past that point. Yeah, like, no, not going well. On, like, you, you need to have it to be like, he left the scene. He feels terrible about it. He didn't know what to do. Like, no, none of that. So at what point in your in your life, because on, on one hand, we are we are dealing with, you know, dudes in their early 20s that are, you know, all of a sudden they have money and stuff. At what point do some of these guys start to think a little bit of, you know what, my life is pretty good right now. I've got, you know, a pretty good professional situation. I got money on the way. Maybe I got a gal, whatever. I don't know if he has a family. But, like, at what point do they put some space between, yeah, let's go race Lamborghinis on the street versus, you know what, I don't want to screw up my awesome situation here. Let's maybe not be impulsive and do something ridiculous. I think – I think it's. I think you're right. I think this started harmlessly. Like we're just on the highway. All of a sudden, a Corvette pulls up. We start racing. We don't think anything bad's gonna happen. But then something bad happens. Right? What made it worse was the minute everybody walked away from it. That's what made it worse. Like I could understand being like, "Hey, Rasheed Rice was in a car accident because he was racing somewhere on the highway." Like, dumbass was racing. Got it. Something harmless. Oh, we'll just go really fast and nothing bad will happen. Something bad happened, but we stayed and we took care of it and the police came and we handled it and it is what it is. But now it's like we left the scene. We're nowhere to be found. Police can't find you. You don't put out your own statement. Jay's got a great point. Like at some point you have to be a man and take responsibility for it. I'm not saying that making a mistake isn't wrong. Like we all make mistakes. Dude, I've made some terrible mistakes. But at the same time, none of us sat hid and like didn't handle it. Like especially in 2024, times are different. Mm. You have to know that everyone has a cell phone that has a camera that has something you're trackable, you're traceable. Everything is so different. You're just under the microscope in such a different limelight. And that's why it's like, I'm surprised to see this still happening now. What? Problems like like, dude, you walked away from a six car accident down the middle of the highway. Like, where did you think you were going to go? You well, just that was strolling, walking, strolling that, down my the question was like, walk to well, that was what I was asking is like, did someone like pick him up? Or did they just like they just walk the off bar- the off ramp? They just like hop Probably. the barrier and go. Like that's when they were like left the accident. I was like, in the middle of the expressway, like there's not I didn't exactly get that like either. hop of like the cops are usually there pretty quick. Yeah. But then also the other piece of it, you know, this is the last piece for me is when you walk away from an accident like that, you allow the narrative to spin completely out of control. Way right. Like control. and now I've seen reports there was guns in the car, right? And then there was sneakers in the car. And then there was this, like, and now you're just, you're adding so many question marks to something that you knew, like Alex said, it was a mistake. It was an accident. He obviously didn't do it on purpose, but you have to own that. When you walk away from something like that and you allow the media to run with other stuff, now there's a bunch of more question marks out there than answers. And you're just digging yourself a deeper hole than you are to try and get out of it. Are they going to feel the pressure to cut him or what's, what's the... That was my thought because he so. only because they have him on video walking away. If he would have stayed and been like, this was a terrible accident, it goes differently in my opinion. Like everything's fine right now. Everyone's just like, hey, Rasheed Rice was caught racing and an accident happened. Everyone's okay. Thank God. It is what it is. But now it's like you said. And in the video, the lady's like, and I saw him grab a gun. And it's like, there you go. That's how it spins there's out of control. Gun, if just the gun like run that. is real, and if then, the gun run is real, then there's, there's that's, more that's of a That's another problem. Getting cut. I think if the, everything's like, okay, there wasn't guns. Like it is like, but as soon as you hear the weird gun, oh. the gun starts to make the NFL feel very. Very, very nervous. nervous. They yeah. are not with the gun thing, dude. I'm telling you, like they came in every year and they were like, "Dudes, no guns yeah. ever." I waited to get my concealed carry permit till I for sure. The they were like, "Don't ever, don't ever fuck around and bring a gun in here. It's yourself." They were like, "Ever, ever," and you were like, "Got, got it. it, got it." <laughs> like with the one time they're like, "Don't." Except, except there's like, always okay. a few in the back, like. <laughs> Never take my AK. Like, God, yeah, you have an AK. <laughs> AK. <laughs> hey, there may have been a couple times we saw a gun in the facility and everybody was just like, Shh. Yeah, dude, "What are you doing?" They're like, "Oh, I just got it from the guy. Get that guy out. <laughs> Put it in dude. the car, cover it with a blanket, and go home." No bullshit. We had one brought to a white elephant, and somebody was like, <laughs> "Grab it!" And I grabbed it. And I was like, "What is it?" They're like, it's a gun. I go, "What?" <laughs> I was like, "Is it really?" And they were like, "Yeah, don't tell anyone." <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like uh, Case. Ke- so Case Keenum uh, in 2017, he got all the offensive line uh, shotguns for Christmas, and the best was he walked in in December, like early December, and he was like, "Hey, quick question for all of you guys." We're like, "Yeah, what's up, Case?" He's like, "Any of you guys convicted felons?" And we're all like, <laughs> "Uh, no, Case, don't think so." Good, 
Good. All right. Sounds good. And like he left and walked out of the out of the door. And I was like, what the? F- okay. And then like the, for Christmas, we had to go like, he's like, all right, here's what we got. You got to go pick up your gun from the, the local sporting goods store. But he got us these sweet trigger uh, shotguns with like a gold plated trigger Remington 870s with a sweet bag. Like it was it was one of the cooler gifts, but it was just funny because he's like, you guys aren't felons, right? Okay, good. I was envisioning him walking into like the old line room, just tossing shotguns at right. everyone. Wait, you, you get, get a, a shotgun. Yeah. You, you get, get a gun. gun. Coach is like, "What the hell is going yeah. on?" Tony's like, "What the hell, boys?" Did he, like, wait, did, did he give shotguns to guys that weren't hunters? Like, did anyone get a shotgun that's oh, never everyone, held a, never held a gun shotgun. before? Yeah, there was a few guys that were like, "What do I do with it?" I was like, "You could sell it to me because you <laughs> don't need this." <laughs> yeah, you have like no Brandon idea Fusco, what you're doing Brandon with Fusco, this. Brandon Fusco, Brandon Fusco, I don't think has ever shot a gun in his life before. And that's me, by the oh, way. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, this is cool. That's me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's the pointy end. Don't point that at anyone. That was Fusco. <laughs> He's, oh, <laughs> this is, oh, oh, look at me. Oh. He used to do oh, that man. shit all the time and make me laugh. So we're just happy that Rasheed Rice is cooperating with local authorities and will take all the necessary we'll steps see. to address Dude, the situation we'll responsibly. Patrick Mahomes so. right now is literally like, I just can't catch a break. Like, I just can't. I can't get Dude, it. Guys are offsides. Crazy? Just yesterday, just yesterday, he received his player performance of 350K. Rasheed Rice. 350k. Just go buy another. Uh, go, go buy go, another Lambo. Yeah, go buy another get, Corvette. That to fix up his Corvette. <laughs> Unreal, dudes. Man, all right. Who's the next mic? Oh, yeah, I'll dude. Go, with it. Some, I'll go, go with for it. it. Next mic. The kickoff. The Ooh. kickoff coming to the NFL, which is hilarious to me. The XFL started it last year, and then the USFL was like, "Nah, NFL's doing it." Fuck off. We're doing it ourselves, <laughs> right? Like, I love. I like the new kickoff rule, and here's what I'm gonna say that. It's not as much that like, oh, it's going to be fun and exciting and new. But for the last three, four years, the kickoff hasn't really been a, a, a play that's mattered in the NFL. And why that may not matter to the general public, it matters to me specifically in my business that when you have a core phase of special teams that doesn't really exist anymore, there's really less reason to keep a four core special teamer on your roster. And so many guys make it into the NFL and stick in the NFL because of their contribution on teams. Yeah. And over the last two years, it's been kickoff, it's been punt and punt return. That's it. Right. Right? That's been it. And so now when you're adding an element like this back into the kickoff kick return game, you're bringing guys like, we need to have dudes that can do this job and do <clears> it well because there's going to be a lot of kick returns next year. Yes. Like a yes. lot. Like You're talking about putting Tyreek Hill back there, getting a running start catching the football on everyone else who's standing flat-footed, you're asking for some explosive-type plays here, oh, which yeah. I'm here for. Sign oh. me up. I'm in on it. But you're also going to have to put some dudes out there that are going to be able to tackle and create space and get off blocks, and it's just good for the game. I know there's football purists out there that are going to hate this, right? They're just going to be like, oh, it's not the same. Like, the game is changing. The game is evolving. But I am all about the new kickoff rule. I think it's going to be a really exciting time. I think we're going to be – Early in the year, it's going to be people feeling it out. But once these special teams coordinators figure out how to scheme some of these returns open, it's going to get electric. And I'm here for it. I agree with you 100%. Those guys are some of the most creative. Like when you talk about having to drop a kickoff return Mm -hmm. and have to make it work. And you think about the old old NFL. I remember Prefer. Devin Hester. Dude, you kicked the ball to him and it was like. That was stupid. That was here it goes. But then you're right. It got taken away because the wedge got taken away, and they started yep. making it. It has to be a one on one block. Thank Dude, God. Were you on by the wedge? The way, Were you on the wedge? Fuck all you. I was on the wedge. I was okay? on the wedge too. And I remember they terrible. They'd be, they would terrible. be like, "Hey rookie, you run 15 yards. You hold your hands out. They're gonna come grab you, and you just run." run. And here's the here's the problem. Let me tell you a problem. Chicago. <laughs> we're playing Chicago. They put one of their D linemen as the number five. Yeah. And he ran a fucking four five forty, and he was three hundred pounds, and he would light up the wedge, and I mean light it up. And there, this dude played us, and I didn't have to go out there for the wedge. It was like one of our linebackers, and he got fucked up. And I was like, oh my god, dude! I was like, this is one of the most insane plays of like you would literally be out there in practice, like please God. Please, God, just bite down real hard because you knew guys were just coming for you. You were the wedge. You were the one that they had to blow up. The wedge was a nightmare. Dude, my brother was a wedge breaker in high school. Those dudes are a little stupid. And he loved it. Like They used to put black stripes (laughs) down your helmet if you knock dudes out, and my brother had the most black stripes I've ever seen in a helmet. He was Shout out to to uh, CTESPN. For sure. The wedge got it. 
if you want to Google why CTE became a thing, just go Google it was the wedge. wedge wedge kickoffs, dude. Like wedge think about kickoffs, that. you would go. You would take. It was an O lineman, and then usually like a tight end, and maybe another O lineman. Like there was or a D lineman li- or a D lineman, and, and you, you would, would hold literally run back and Grab hold me. hands. Hold and just hand. sprint at whoever was the wedge guy that week, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, it just was pure insane. chaos. It was, it was so, so stupid. Fun. Like looking so back fun. on it, like oh. yeah. But I can remember the first time I did it in a live game, like because I it was in priest. God damn it! Here it goes. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember like we once we get to twenty k subscribers, new yeah, microphone. I'll get a new, so we're getting you a new mic. But like in practice, like leading up to my first, I think it was my rookie year. Like we were like, hey, you're on the KOR, KOR. And then the first time you do it in a real game, I was like, oh, my God, these dudes are moving so fast. So right? fast. Like, so fast. Like, purely just like, whoa, whoa. Doesn't make like, sense. It doesn't. doesn't make sense. It does not. Because you're just, they're running right at you, and you're like, I'm flat-footed. And well, all of a sudden, you're somebody backwards, go, right? Because you're running backwards. But they're backwards. getting like a 40-yard head start. But yes. the problem is you also, you're like, waiting. you're looking back, and you're waiting for the return no, no. to give you the go call. That's what you're waiting for. And so the you're go. looking, and all of a sudden, they're like, oh. go, go, go. And you turn around, and they're 10 yards away from you. And you're like, no, no. I'm telling you, I'm excited for this new rule. And I agree with you. I think I like the purists of football are going to be like, oh, this is stupid. But nobody was doing anything. Everyone was just kicking it out of the back of the end zone. And everyone was yeah. like, okay, this is stupid. And we're not doing anything. And you're right. Now you add value to more players. Yes. Guys who were getting cut that were like, I swear I'm valuable. If you could just return a couple of these. And they're like, what do you want us to do? Nobody's doing it anymore. Now you're going to bring guys back in yep. that are keeping older guys around that are longer. Like, dude, look at uh, who was um, – Slater from uh, the Patriots played yeah. like 12 years, all as a special team player. Yeah. Like, these guys the are going to start back showing back up again, dude. This is going to be so fun to watch. I agree with you. I think I'm super excited about it. I and wish you're going to see the return of like a, a returner is going to become a premier position. Oh, yeah, NFL. dude. Right. Like you start talking about like that guy, Xavier Worthy from Texas that ran a 4 2 1. Like now all of a sudden you're like, hey. That's... You you may become more valuable than you know now. If you can go from yeah. zero to a hundred like that, mm-hmm. maybe now you do talk about you going up in the first rounder. Cordell Patterson, right? Dude still runs like an absolute animal with the ball in his hand. Yep. And now it's like, hey, you're gonna return kicks again. This is what made you who you were. Right? Also, like, I remember like, him. Don't you guys? I remember it's him returning. Be great. It's gonna uh, be great. On the old kickoff format, there's only so many ways to scheme it, really. But now, oh, because no. it's, it's oh, now, dude, you're, that's a lie. There was there's like, a, there was like you have no ten, idea. Eight, there was yeah. like eight to ten returns in every year, every yeah. every week. Like right? the you fives would come across left, and right. hit people, dude. It yeah. was awesome. You had middle left, it. right, middle bounce, middle. But don't you think? Maybe I'm wrong on this. But don't you think there's more ways to scheme? I mean, you're literally lining up as if it's a running play. Oh, 100 percent. That's oh yeah. We think we can add. On a kickoff it. return, you can run power. You can run zone blocking schemes. You can run. Oh, it's gonna be. You great. can put your starting offensive lineman out there. I mean, because it's all co- it's close quarters now, right? right. It's, it's like great. five yards away. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be so I fun, can't wait. dude. I can't Our team's wait. gonna just kick it through the back of the end zone to get because it's th- it's the thirty yard it's the line. Thirty now. yard line now. That's is it gonna be worth just you know screw it? Let's just put him at the thirty in some situations. Maybe, but through the 30s. I don't know, man. You get out to there. the 30, and you're looking almost halfway down the field, and that yeah. starts to get dangerous for another dude, team. Dude, you go to the like, 30, you're two, like, if you have a good kicker, you're two first downs away from field goal range. That's my point. Like, right? dude, like, yeah, you're really going to force and the these hand kickers of a are of... kicking 65-yarders. Right. So. I mean, you yeah. got kickers bombing 64-yarders in the U.S. Did you see that? Oh, How about dude, that so, guy? So that he guy's... kicked since high school? Is that accurate? Just went out there and just Welcome to the shot. NFL, buddy. Just Welcome <laughs> to the NFL. Yeah, you, you do something like that, the NFL First dude being called up. Him. You already know all 32 teams were like, he did what? 64? Call him. Call him. Oh, by the way, by the way, right UFL, we were on a text thread. No looking yes. at the text thread. Who is your team and did they win? Birmingham Stallions. And they absolutely won, baby. Matt Corral came in, threw him down the field, roasted him up. <laughs> Go Stallions. Dude, the Houston Roughnecks rushed for like 40 yards. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I need to go Shame. down there and have a talk. Right, so to here's, here's what the text read was. It's not football season. We're all like just holding on for dear life here. We decided as an O-line committee before the game started, right? We did this Saturday morning before the game started. We are all picking a team and dying on the hill for that team this year. <laughs> We're going to get merch. We're going to be all about it. And I'm all about the Birmingham Stallions going all the way to the ship. Let's go. Come on, Stallions. Be ponies. Be ponies. Dude, the Roughnecks better pull their heads out of their asses. They passed for like 150 yards, rushed for 40. I was not happy. I'm going to tell you right now. I was was like, dude, 
this is some bullshit. You guys are both one and zero, and I'm zero and one. This is nonsense, dude. I, no, I think I'm zero and one, right? I'm, I'm St. Louis Battle Hawks. Oh, I don't know. I thought are you, you won. This is your job. I was very this confidently is... zero and one until Boone just said I was one and zero. Oh, no, I, need to I think you just got fined. By the way, fined, we've created buddy. a fine. We've created. A I fine think you just got fined. No, you're, 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 you're planting uh, doubt. You're planting doubt in my sure head here. UFL. Yeah. I'm checking right on now. Tuesday Battle mornings Hawks. or whenever uh, we record. Hold on. If you don't they lost. Team, Dude, they, they, they lost 18 to 16. Oh, did that's they? A, you know what? In fact, that's, that's a, a ding that's a for Alex. That's a false spell. Yeah. That's a false spell for Alex Boone. Yeah. I just said I wasn't sure. Sensitive. I thought they don't lost. Don't you get I'm sensitive not. on me. I just said. By the way, <laughs> I don't get how you can beat a team called the Maulers and call yourself a real <laughs> tough guy. The Pittsburgh Maulers. Dude, the names the names are fantastic. I love the names. The like, Brahmas. Showboats. Who's the, Who's the Brahmas? Brahmas? Is it the San Antonio Showboats? Brahmas? The yeah. Showboats. This is Great. hilarious. I love it. Dude, by yeah. the way, I already got my hat. So you guys are in Oh, you did? Did you yeah. go trucker style or what would you opt for there, Booney? Oh, yeah, I had to do the trucker one for sure. It's great. I'm getting a hat. I'm getting an order. I'm getting a stallion's hat order. Baby. UFLmerch.com. I don't even know what the website is. I'm all yeah, we'll it, be. Dude. We're doing okay, it. we need one more mic before we get to dumb football questions here. Booney, do you have a mic that you want to throw out here? Um, Let's do it. Let's talk about the Jets making a move. Oh, man. Making a trade, dude. Coming in for the Hassan Reddick. They were like, you know what, dude? We got to do something. I'm coming back around a little bit to the Jets. I'm not against I mean, this. It all depends if their geriatric quarterback can stay healthy or not. Dude, dude it's going to be that, interesting. That is, that is the whole thing that their linchpin of their entire season rests upon. Agreed. If Aaron Rodgers can stay healthy, yeah, they'll give themselves a chance in every game because he's Aaron Rodgers. If he can't, we're looking at a rinse and repeat of 2023. I'm that skeptical. could be a mess, too. That's that's my question. If it's a rinse and repeat, everyone's fired. Okay. Everyone, I'm just every, making sure everyone, we're all on the same page. From top to bottom. The like, I can't believe out. we thought this was going to work. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Like, the, the, if this is a rinse and repeat and Aaron's hurt, like, and you paid all that money and gave up all that capital, it doesn't work. Everyone's getting fired. Go on. Everyone. Also, here's the latest headline. Okay, if you if you just look up, you know, Jets headlines, for instance. Okay, Jets owner refutes absolutely false report that That's he and Coach too. Robert Sala had a dispute and a yelling match. The fact that it's, I mean, you got the Chiefs trying to figure out what are we doing with Rasheed Rice here, fleeing the scene of a of a speed racer incident. But the Jets are sitting here, like head coach, maybe arguing with owner. It's they're always just a disaster in every facet. They're always like in the headlines it's for the wrong reasons. Easy. Dude. It's never easy for the Jets. You know what I'm the latest headline is for the Lions right now? Nothing. There is nothing. 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 Yeah. But that's New York at the Lions same time. Lions reload. But let's be honest. They really went after Colleen Wolf for that. Did you notice that? Have you? Has anyone been paying attention to that whole thing? Was she, that did she report? She was the one that kind of broke it, right? And I like Colleen Wolf. She's really nice cool she was just like a source told me that they were kind of fighting and all of a sudden this just blew up but this is exactly what happens in new york the minute something like this goes down people are just going to go crazy with it and that's why this media thing is kind of getting crazy for them because they're kind of under the microscope in a massive way now like everyone's like woody johnson and robert Sala are fighting and people don't know if to believe it or not and at the same time and of course like, they're going to dispute it yeah. Dude, of course they are. You it would never want party, anyone to know, you know that your problems. But that's why it's like where there's smoke, there's a little fire. Like somebody might not be wrong. I guarantee Stephon, you. Stefan Diggs, there's truth to all rumors. Dude, for sure there is. But we, it's we should do a segment where we just read Stefan Diggs' cryptic tweets every week. Oh, this that's so fun. That's so fun. Well, but you guys have about, to know like, Diggs. You dude, have to know him to love him. I got, I got, a, I got kind of a left field mic here before we move on. Um, I think that women's college basketball has been super exciting this year. Yes. I think it's been really fun to watch. But I also think it's really interesting that the women's college coaches did not understand that when you become way more into the public eye and the public perception of what's happening, there's going to be criticism. There's mm. going to be articles that you do not like. And you can't take it so personally. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, it's true. It's, it's true. It, dude. You can't. Like, you. Dinger you, for sensitive. Do it. Like, do well, it. I, I, dude, I agree. You should, and Kim, women's basketball 100% should have been elevated to where it was at this year because it's been fun to watch. It's been fun to follow. Caitlin Clark, all that stuff. But now you've got the head coaches that are like, ah, I was so offended by that article that guy wrote, and I didn't even read it. It's like, what? That's not how that works, right? Like you can't you can't <laughs> say things like that. Like you have to understand that if you're gonna be in the larger limelight, 
there's going to be criticism. You got to learn how to take it on the chin. The NBA coaches, the college coaches, the NFL coaches get this shit all the time. It's okay. Just roll with it. And the but top the more players you come get out and you crucified, got, get crushed, constantly murdered. But then that like, what's her name came out with like the she had like the thing was like this person has been trying to write an article on me for two years. Two, I refuse to talk back. And now if he writes it, I'm suing him. It's like ah, let's let's let's, 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 let's try and figure this out, right? Let's work this out. But like I'm suing him. Yeah, I just I found it interesting that it was just like everyone took it so personal. Every article, every headline was just a personal attack upon everyone. It's like no, this is just mainstream reporting. I know you guys have been not in the main light. This is what it is. Get used to it. Yeah. Also, right. some of these college coaches, like like Kim Mulkey is the one from LSU you're oh, talking yeah. about. And she's been around. She's got like four national titles, yeah. 25 years. And she's been she's run Baylor and LSU and done whatever she wants, bringing the best players. And like you said, you get to, and that's great. Like all the work that she has done and Gino at UConn yeah. has has brought us to this point now where you've got these these Titan organizations. But yeah, like the more this is what everyone wanted. And this is yes. awesome. But but there's always a certain percentage of criticism, and it's just going to get magnified. So everyone needs to take a deep breath, calm Relax. down. Relax. Yeah. Just because yeah. yeah. the they write it doesn't mean it's even true. That. The article no, wasn't even that inflammatory. It's like, yeah. It, it, most great just, coaches are hard to play for. Most great coaches you probably hate in the moment a little hated bit. Them. You know? it hated it is, them. Hated yes. them. Yeah. But you love it. them later. And that's yeah. what they don't understand. It's like it has to be a love-hate relationship with a great coach. Because when you're out on the field or you're on the court, whatever it is, you're like, God, this they're just a dick the minute you come off the court you're i'm gonna be honest and i'm not gonna name any names but jay and i have talked about this a lot there are a lot of o-line coaches that we were like you wouldn't believe how nasty this guy was and then you meet him and you're like are you sure because that was the sweetest old man i ever met and they're like don't 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 (laughs) it's how it goes and do you think those coaches gave a flying fuck what any reporter wrote about them they don't give a shit. They were like, I'm here to Scribes do my job. Scri- hey, G- Jimmy, get up there. And he'd be like, got him again. Scribes and pundits. They're believing me. You'd be like, this guy's the best. He's just messing with them. Like deep down, you know, it's a big joke. And you can't really take anything serious. That's why the fine system was created in the O-line room. Because you're the ones that are taking most of the heat. And you're like, dude, we have to be able to shake this stuff off and laugh it off and do whatever because they don't know the truth about us and people like that don't understand how hard of a commitment you have to be in and be like yeah i hated that guy but i loved him like yeah. hated him yeah. but i loved him yeah so yeah by the way caitlin clark Go. she she dropped 40 points Go. last night she she's coming off screens and just popping Dude. like logo threes against one of the best teams in the country by the way minnesota's own Paige beckers leads uk we get i think we get Paige versus I, don't, I didn't in the see. Final I went to four. sleep. I didn't see who won the UConn game last night. UConN, man. I yeah. just wanted to watch Let's the LSU Iowa game. Like it's going to be one of the most watched. Game. I think it's going to be one of the most watched women's basketball games of all time. I think the the final matchup from them last year was. Yeah. I wish I knew what you guys were talking about. I really do. Hey, listen, <laughs> Booney, I'm not. I'm not big on women's basketball Jay, as it was. Stop. But stop. this 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 tournament's been fun to watch. It's, it's been, been a, a blast. good. It's been a good time to watch. The basketball's been pretty good. Like, Boone, this would be a good time for a softball s- cheer here. Teach us stop. a softball cheer. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. We're championing women's sports, and you are the number one champion of the, the girls' softball team. Dude, I can't even tell you how many meetings I had to go to last night. I had to go sit to a softball meeting, and then I had to go to baseball practice, and then I had to come home and get ready for Dude, it's just basketball. I don't have time to watch basketball. Stop it. Stop it. We, sh- we should sit down and watch uh, like an NBA Finals game with Boone and have him. No. <laughs> stare at the TV. Zero for chance you'll catch hours. me doing that. <laughs> Zero chance. By the way, uh, before we get to dumb football questions, here is a reading from Stefan Diggs' Twitter account. Mm. Do it. March 29th. All that hating don't make you no extra money. March 28th. Ketchup goes in the fridge, by the way, not the cabinet. March 25th. Being diligent. <laughs> March 17th, God, I trust you. (laughs) March 16th, well, dot, 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 dot. That was the best one because that was right before free agency. (laughs) And I was like, oh, God, he's getting traded. March 15th, ready for whatever. (laughs) Dude, he knows he's just got a captive audience. He's just messing with everybody. Just sitting there, just eating out of the palm of his hand. (laughs) What next, Mr. Dix? (laughs) So there's a reading from Stefan Diggs' Twitter account. All right, boys, time for some dumb football questions here. 
every single week we dive into the YouTube comment section and we take your dumb football questions. We stockpile them. And we get to as many of them as we can. We also, I think this is going to be a new trend here on the dumb football question segment. We're going to read from the Apple and Spotify review sections where you guys can give us a five-star rating and a positive review and let us know in those sections who your favorite obscure offensive linemen are of all time. Mm. This is from Biggie, who on March 27th gives us a five-star. Thank you, Biggie. Thank you, Biggie. Says, awesome show. Great show, guys. My submission for random offensive linemen I liked was was Gray Rugamer. Gray? Or is it Gary? Did he spell it wrong? Hey, don't, Gray don't, don't, Rugamer. Be, don't be getting a biggie like that. Biggie knows Come what he's on. doing. Gray Rugamer, Green Bay Packer, 47 like years old, 300 pounds, born in 1976, oh, what Las a, Vegas, Nevada. What a stallion, dude. Mm. Oh man, this dude had some hair back in the day too. I think okay. he's now he's now named a club's director of player engagement in 2017. Also, he yeah he worked as an executive for the Packers. Okay, he might he might be an exec. Look at this guy, what a stat. Miami Dolphins 1999, Pittsburgh Steelers, Pro oh, Patriots 2000 to 2002. Ooh, dude's got a Bowl? ring. Green Bay Packers 03 to 05, Giants. So okay, that's pretty obscure. Um, and then uh, from Slim2321, his favorite obscure offensive lineman is Notre Dame and the Vikings' own John Sullivan. Ooh. Do you guys have any – do you guys ever – you ever cross paths with John? He, dude, he chirped me on Ferrari Twitter fine. Like six months he, ago. He Ferrari fine. number one – he was the reason the big baller in the Ferrari fine was created in the O-line room. When he, he showed up a, that day? He had a four-door – hatchback ferrari the california it was called the ferrari california and, and so he showed up he and i was in, like that's a ding that's the any- biggest thing and tony was like <laughs> what is that and i was like that's a ding tony that's a yep. ding vroom, 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 vroom. i was like no <laughs> way dude you know like it was hilarious because at the time like it was khalil and myself and we had the big trucks jay you had a truck like yeah. everybody had a truck on the old line and all of a sudden you hear vroom, 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 and i was like <laughs> Tony's like, what is that? <laughs> ding. <laughs> and we told him every day you drive it in, you're getting ding, dude. And he was like, he was super pissed about that. He was a vet at the time, right? He would have been. Yeah. Is he older yeah, than you guys? He was coming off a broken Soli and back. and I were probably the same age. That's right. Yeah. He yeah. Had a, I think he had a broken back in 15. Uh, I will say this. Sully was one of the smartest guys so I ever played smart. with. Like you, so smart. He, was, he was to the point to where you were like, okay, I get it. You're smart. You understand everything, and you get everything. Like, you're smart. Got it. But then he would drive his Ferrari in, and I'd be like, dang, that's a fine. <laughs> but wait, also, what, so what, you, if you don't drive a truck, you get, uh, you get no, a dang and a fine? Dri- you can't dude, drive a Ferrari, again, dude. The definition of big baller is flexing that you have money. Right. Okay. That's and so if you drive a Ferrari four door hatchback, you're flexing like, yeah, I got cash. And then he'd come in with his Louis Vuitton bag or whatever it was. We just ding. He also lived. I've in never Greenwich, understood the Louis Vuitton bag thing. Not for him, I mean, for anyone. No, I don't. Know, I've, I've, a, I've a, never understand the like luggage thing in general. Like, yeah, what are we carrying bags around for? That was like what was it two years ago? Where John? Well, no, in Taylor football you have a John- bag. Like everyone has a backpack because you yeah. have your playbook. So, and your so iPad. he has a. It's like his backpack. It's not like yeah. a man purse. No, he had like it was the functional. big duffel. He had like the big duffel. But like that was like Jonathan Taylor got all his O linemen for Christmas a few years ago, like that big duffel Louis Vuitton, and everyone was like, "Oh, thank you, thanks, man." Like it was like this. Oh, an avocado. Sure, Rolex, thanks, <laughs> right? Like it was just like nobody thanks. knows what to do with it. Yeah, it's <sighs> like I don't, I'm gonna give this to my wife, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, Matthews7335 chimes in, YouTube comment section. What is the most dumb rookie thing you've ever seen a rookie do on, like, the first day of camp or close to it? Mm. Mm. You, want, you want to talk about the hill or you, no? Let's not talk about the hill. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. wow. <laughs> Let's not do the hill. Um, do the hill. Don't name names, but do the hill. Don't name names, but do the hill. Okay. <laughs> when I was in Minnesota with Jeremiah, we had a rookie who, during practice, defecated <laughs> on the hill at practice and what? left it there and wiped with the Gatorade towel and left it. 
And so we didn't find out till way later. EQ was very not happy. Yeah, the equipment people. Dennis Ryan was one of the greatest guys I was ever around in the NFL. Like, just the nicest guy. And when he came to me and told me, and he was like, somebody better make this right, I was like, understood. Understood. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Was it like in an, an emergency? You remember the field? IBS remember the field? situation? Remember, you remember the, you remember the field? Park? Do you remember the yeah. hill yeah. that has the trees? Hill going yeah. up they went behind a tree the instead Adrian of Peterson going hill. inside. Yes. Instead of going inside, they went to the hill. Nobody knows why. It got cleaned up by EQ, and they were they were fucking pissed. Let's just put Wait, it was that he, way. Was he just just to, to describe this for the audience? We're unsure. This is the we're old not Viking. sure, dude. This is the, the old Vikings practice facility. You guys had like yep. three the outdoor side. fields. Yep. There's there's like trees and a fence kind of lining. So it was you like can't this. Just walk you, up. And- you would go down there, and there was a turf turf field, and there was two grass fields. And next to the grass field was a massive hill because it was kind of sunk yeah. in, so nobody could see what we were doing. And like there was a big fence around it, and it was completely lined, so nobody Did could ever look in. Did he climb the hill and just no, drop like he, trow? Yeah, yeah he, he just like up walked hill, up, dropped th- trow, squatted, and shit. Not even kidding you. Not even kidding you. It was a real, they, this is a real story. They were pissed. And they were like, this is the most unbelievable thing in the world. Like, Tony couldn't believe it. Tony called me in and was like, are you for real with this? I was like, dude, I don't know. I don't know what to do, Tony. Like, and by the like, way, again, it's it, for, for the layout. You're close enough to the bathroom. Quicker to go into the building, yes. right? And yes, because there was on the other side was a double door that you could just walk right through, and to the left was a bathroom. Because <laughs> you used to take your drug test there, remember, Jay? Yep. You'd walk in, and the drug tester would grab you and be like, come with me real quick. You'd be like, okay, cool, got it. You, it was almost faster to go that way, but instead he went the other way. I will be honest with you. Same rookie. Lost his playbook in the preseason. <laughs> the preseason. Not even kidding you. We've in, oh, we've talked about this player two. before. <laughs> yeah, you think give it away, you dumbass. <laughs> no, well, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> For the diehards, you, yeah, the diehards. If you uh, wanted to, I mean, and obviously Alex was there only two years, so you could do some research if you really wanted to. <laughs> I mean, we both know the story. Clearly, we were here. What 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 level find is that? What bin oh, does huge. that fall under for the ding? That might have been SFR, the same as the iPad. New category. It was the SFR. It was the SFR, which is stupid fucking rookie. And then the team find him, I think, like 10 grand. For the playbook. <laughs> That's an expensive crap. No, for the playbook. <laughs> for no, the for the playbook. playbook. Oh, the playbook's playbook. a big okay. find. I don't remember That's a what condo. we find him. It was a lot. It was a lot. But I, I don't remember the exact amount we find him. Because it was a special. Wow, like, it was a specialty specialty yeah. allocation but the, the playbook was the one that set him off like that was dude that's a huge no-no and especially as a rookie they tell you like the one thing you can never do is lose your playbook you can never lo- and it was when we were in a away game and we they were like there's no way this is happening and he was don't have it they were like why didn't you tell us when we were there and he was like i didn't know they're like how do yeah, you not waited. know where you, they're like how do you not know where back. your playbook is and he was like i didn't realize until we got home and they were like this is insane. There are a lot of things that happen. So did okay. One more thing on this. Did did so did an equipment guy have to go up with like a dog poop bag or like a shovel? Like what what level of cleanup are we talking about here? Unsure. We're unsure. But if you not, can imagine a shit it was probably on not the side good. of a hill and then being like, oh, I left a t- I left a towel up here. I must have blown away from practice. Must have pick yeah. up said towel oh. feces. Anyways, okay, Leto yeah. P chimes in, says, you guys hit on Andrew Luck's injury history a Wait, week I don't or get, two ago. I don't, get a dumb, I don't get a dumb rookie. I don't get a dumb rookie one. Oh, by all means. So it's not as bad as that, but I was in San Diego my rookie year, and it's we we're sitting there, and all those rookies had to go around the room and say, you know, I'm Jeremiah, I went to Nebraska, whatever. And we had this linebacker. I don't remember his name. He was an undrafted free agent. And he stands up and he goes, my name's so-and-so. I'm from the Ohio State University National Champions. And I'll never forget King Dunlap had a, a Gatorade, like little Gatorade thing full of seeds that he'd been spitting in. And he, he's, again, eight-year vet, dude, been in the league forever. And he stands up, throws it at him in the middle of the team and goes, no one gave a fuck where you came from and sat back down and everyone oh, just started dying <laughs> right like and like it, that was my first moment where, like this dude was so excited to be able to say like where he was from like i'm a buckeye and like no one cared everyone and so everyone the rest of the year just called him buckeye and i he got cut in camp i was like hey buckeye get over here 
Right, but like who was the, it? The, the vigor. I can't remember. It was a linebacker. No, dude. you got to find out who was that. Oh, gosh, I'll I'll figure it out. But like, was, what, the team? Way, what, what year? Team what year? It, what it year? Was the Chargers in 2014. He was an undrafted free agent rookie. It maybe had been 15. I can't remember if it was 14 or 15 because I was there for two camps. But like, just the vigor and the like the he's the stand up that he said it with was just so like the Ohio State University national <laughs> like the dude just chucked the biggest seeds out of it. it was incredible 2014 Ohio State so this it was either the 13 Ohio State team or the 14 it would have been the 13 right? Ohio State seed or the 14 let me, let me see here let me go uh Joshua Perry that sounds right he played for the 2014 national championship no, Ohio State yeah team. there's a good chance that was him Yep. Uh, might have been Joshua Perry. If I, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, if it's not Joshua Perry, sorry to Joshua Perry uh, for dragging you <laughs> right in this segment. That's hilarious. Yeah, he was a uh, fourth round pick. Was he fourth round pick? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. we'll Could keep be. looking that up. Could be. We'll, we'll do more. But it, yeah, that was my favorite rookie story. That was like the very quick way for me to realize that uh, <laughs> no one cares. No one gave a shit where you come from anymore. He you was so excited. In, he was yeah. so excited, dude. He was so pumped. I won a national championship. Yeah. The hey, everybody, Ohio State, State University. Okay. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Eat some seed <laughs> gels, you seed. clown. Yeah, it, like the best was like he just didn't even fight it. Like usually some guy would be like, oh, he just like. Okay, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. It's fine. Uh, Leto P chimes in. You guys hit on the Andrew Luck injury history last week or a couple weeks ago. As an offensive lineman, what is the fallout from the locker room and mentally when a quarterback gets hurt from a guy that you were responsible for? Like when Dwayne Brown gave up the uh, Aaron Rodgers Achilles sack, for instance. Like, do you guys ever feel bad if you blow you blow a block or something? I mean, it's not as and you'll probably beat yourself up more individually than anything else. Um, I don't know if I've ever, I don't think I was ever part of a hit that got someone hurt like personally, but you know, you'll never you'll never blame a guy for missing a block and getting a guy hurt, right? That's part of the game. Guys miss blocks all the time. Guys miss reads all the time. Guys yeah. miss balls, whatever it is. It's, it's part of the game. Is it unfortunate? Absolutely. But, like, nothing would be worse than coming in the locker room and being like, you ruined our season, you jackass, right? Like, it just it doesn't work like that. No, it never, it never really happens like that. And don't get me wrong. When you get the quarterback hit, there's a lot of times you feel really, really Horrible. bad horrible especially because at times they make they make crazy sounds when they get hit like especially when they don't see it coming dude they make that th <laughs> dude they, uh, dude they make a throttling noise and you're like i'm really sorry buddy like, like you're you you the death rattle you, like, of their lungs we're just like oh. the, the best quarterbacks will sit there and be like yo it's my bad and you're like no I, it's <laughs> yeah. not it's not they're like i yeah. should have got rid of it you're like nah, it's my like that's almost hurts you even worse when you're yeah. like dude it was my fault. All right, as you're, I'll as you're fix peeling it. them off. Yeah, you're turn. literally picking him up, dude. I'm I so sorry. Chalk. There was one yeah. time. There was one time we were playing the Giants, and it was actually against Linval when he played for the Giants, and it was Linval, and it was Justin Tuck, and they ran a twist, and it was very, very late. I mean, they must have fallen into it really late to the point that me and AD didn't even think it was a twist, and they ended up picking AD, and I ended up trying to take two, and they ended up like grabbing Alex. And I remember holding him up with them. And I was like, if he's going down, I'll get tackled with him. And they started, like, sacking me. And I was like, dude, this sucks. Like, they're all hitting you from every angle. And they're trying to pull you down. And the whole time, you're just, like, holding your quarterback. Like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Somebody blow the whistle. Oh, my God. Like, you're just, like, let it. But, dude, it's nobody ever turns around and goes, that's your fault. Like, nobody ever says, like, you're responsible for this. Like, you would have to really blow it horribly wrong. Like, we've seen some things. Jay and I have even here where guys missed a block and it was like the quarterback got tattooed and people were just like, Hey, you got to be smarter than that. Like you can't let this stupid shit affect us for the rest of the season. Cause you're right. One of those hits is going to eventually end up affecting your team forever. And you're like, you're right. We only have a limited window with this guy. We can't get the, but nobody's ever like you cost us the season. Like that's not really feasible. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. The worst part is the O line coach in the in the O line room when you get your quarterback tattooed when he doesn't say anything, but he just rewinds it, plays it, rewinds it, plays it, <laughs> and no one's saying anything in the room. Zero right? words are being spoken, <laughs> and you're just watching it over and over again, like, oh god, 
<laughs> and if it's you, it's it's so. And even if it's not you, it's so awkward because like you don't want to look at your buddy, right? Like because you know like the hammer's coming, and after about like the eighth time, you just what the and you're like oh there it comes here it goes like, or, like it's like when the baby's crying and like <gasps> like it's just a big inhale like you know it's coming but if he just moves on if you're a young player like if you're a young player and you're in training camp and like you're trying to make the team and you're watching that and like it's a preseason game and all of a sudden he just moves on you're right cut. like he doesn't say oh anything, it's bad that's when you're just like oh god dead man walking like yeah. that dude's dead. and then after the meeting they're like, Is that, he didn't say anything. It's like he doesn't even care enough. It's to not good, dude. Good. It's That's not good. Like, good. He, like the young guys just like, Whoa. I was worried he was gonna scream. It's like, no, buddy, you'd much rather him. Want you want the screaming. Like, you you want the screaming. The silence. You, he's the he slow doesn't guy. want to coach you. Yeah, right. he doesn't want That's to waste his is. time with you. He said that enough about to you, and he's not gonna say it again. The worst, in my opinion, was when they would keep rewinding, and then they'd be like, you tell me, yeah, <laughs> what do we do wrong here? And you'd be like. Oh. Fuck, there's a multitude of things I did wrong. <laughs> yeah. Which one am I hitting home? And you'd be like, first, my stance is shit. He'd be like, okay. He understands I'm going to grill the fuck out of him right now. Like, he, he's going to get it. And you're like, I, I, I'm oozing off the ball. I'm not throwing my hands. I'm being a pussy. Like, you're just throwing everything out there. And he's like, yep, yep. Did you, did yep. you guys know that that happens in media too? That really? in, in my career, and this happens in, in radio especially, probably happens in TV that there are radio program directors that will bring hosts in or talent in yeah. once a week or once, even like some do it once a day and they will play back chunks of your show and coach you. Like, like for you guys, let's go back and watch the film here. Yeah. I, in my, in my life and career doing this in idiot on a microphone, I've had program directors, they bring you in, they play like five minutes of a clip and they say, I want you to listen to this. Tell me what you hear. Tell hey, tell man. me what you think you could have done what? better here, dude. It's it's we should do that dude. for this show actually. Yeah, Alex, who's Sir, be, who's Sirius used to do that. The, uh, Sirius used to do that. Sirius XM used to do it. Sirius XM used to do it, and they would call they would call us in, and they would be like, "Okay, this is what we think," and they would go over it with you, and you'd be like, "So uncomfortable." This is awkward. Yeah, <laughs> you'd be like, "This is." So they would give you feed, like feedback yeah. on your segments and stuff. Yeah, and they'd be like, "I want to, we want to meet again later in a couple months, and we're going to sit down and talk again about what you're doing and stuff like that." And you'd be like, "Yeah, no." Not at all. <laughs> like, Hard not pass. at all. What, like, did they did they ever like give you any const like actual constructive valuable feedback, or was it just trying to justify their existence as a middle manager? <laughs> it was just trying to justify because back then, dude, this it was uh, Amber Theo Harris and I. We would do the pregame show, so we would talk about all the games for the day, and it was really just like Booney. What do you think? And so it was like this is what I think, and they're gonna win or they're gonna lose, and this is why, and this is the week, and blah blah. blah. It was literally like, guys, I don't know how you could screw this up. What do you mean, like? <laughs> They were like, no, no, we love it. It's great. The energy's great. Like, wow. But like, let's play this clip back and let me yeah. know what you think you And you would this. listen to it and they'd be like, what do you think? And you'd be like, I think I took a long pause because I wasn't sure what I was thinking. And yeah. I had to <laughs> think about it for a second. And they were like, oh, okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. No. It's like, no, I, would, he, I wouldn't he, handle that well. No, I, dude. I, it was, I wouldn't handle that well at all. It was a lot, man. I didn't, I didn't really, to be honest, like. Our meeting is program director meeting is us just texting all week. Like, can't believe you said that. You're an idiot. You're going to owe me a steak and a beer at the end of this. My favorite is finding the most like defamatory comment and sending it and be like, oh, someone, yes. It's the best. Dude, people think that we must get really hurt by it. But when you oh. send them through, I die laughing because I'm like, okay. Anytime, listen, if you want to get my attention, just make fun of Alex's skinny legs because those are just, those, wow. just get, those just get pinned right to the top. Right to the top. Wow. Of the I'll bust throw her myself for that. Um, wow. I th Listen I still here, think pickleball shoulder. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sensitive. <laughs> Sensitive. I still think the Deflection. best one is when, when you guys poked the Kirk Cousins hornet's nest like a month oh, ago. Oh, oh we'll poke it again. I've never experienced <laughs> anything like that in my Dude, life. I Booney, have. Booney, Phil, Booney, you and I have. You and I have. Last well, but year. But Booney took a shot. Booney took a shot at. We all did. But like Booney was talking about. He doesn't work on Tuesdays and all the rooms that I've been in Tuesdays, Tuesdays, and the number of people that came back and said, well, Boone didn't work on Sundays, didn't show up on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys are so creative. Keep them coming. I am not a women's basketball coach. I do not get that. Oh, man. Uh, David Henneman chimes in here and says, what do you guys look for in college film study that translates to the NFL with young interior offensive linemen? This is a very specific question. 
Interior. What translates? Mm. What doesn't translate? <sighs> Guards and, and centers. If a, if a, if the number one thing I look for is hand quickness in the pass game. Mm. Yep, like if strike. you have if you have a guard or a center that is very quick with their hands in college and strikes, that's the number one thing that's going to need to go to the next level, which is how quickly the interior guys are on you in the next level, right? Like so many guys in college don't use their hands at any that the guard position, the center, like they're just kind of like bodying guys or mirroring guys up and then grabbing and holding on. But you have to strike at the next level or you're dead. I mean, you're done for before you're dead on arrival. So if I identify a guy that's like, hey, man, this dude actually throws his hands. Like he actually strikes and he throws them out there and he's not afraid to get them knocked down because he's actually giving a shit about it. That's my number one thing I look for in interior guys. I agree. That's one of the things that we were looking at yesterday and one of the one of the guys we were watching, and I was like, Wow, he's got a nice strike. Like it's one of those things where it looks different to Jay and I because everybody in college is so passive at times and they're just all trying to grab each other and hold on for dear life. And you're like, that's not how this works. And even in the gym, when we talk to guys, like we have a day dedicated just to striking because it's such a skill that there's so many times that guys in the moment will be like, well, I don't know what happened. And I just grabbed him. And it's like, you can't do that. You have to strike him. You have to stop his charge. You have to do this. So when we start watching somebody, it's the first thing that stands out because you're standing up D lineman. You're literally like, you strike them and they stand straight up and we're like, yep, call them. Let's see what's up. Let's see what this dude wants to do because he's different. He's willing to attack somebody. He's willing to come out here and he control the rep. That's what we call it in the gym. Like if you don't control the rep, you're just hanging on for dear life and you're yeah. like, just die this slow death. But if you're controlling the rep, you shoot your hands, they might slap them and you just reposition. And all of a sudden you're back to striking again. Like it's just keeping people away and not being afraid to use your strength, use your length. Like that's the one thing we look for in the core guys. Two, how fast are they coming off the ball? A lot of the guys in the core kind of ooze off the ball. They kind of just... And you're like, all right, he's just another big dude. But then there's guys that move, and you're like, holy shit. This guy knows how to move his feet. He knows how to strike. We should call him. He looks like he's going to be ready for the next level. It To us, it just kind of looks like they're a step above. They're not They're not just out there playing to play. They're out there controlling guys, running the game, like being like, no, I'm going to stand you up and throw my paymakers, headbutt you a little bit. Like, We like the aggression. That's what the yeah. NFL is looking for. They're not looking for guys that are like, oh, sure, I think I can do that. They're looking for guys who are like, yeah, I can do that, and I'll do it with a smile on my face and headbutt the shit out of this dude. Like That's mm -hmm. come out here and show and the, us. And the number one like red flag for me is guys that position block on the inside. And what I mean by position block is if you're in a run game, right, and you're just like, let me just shield him from where the hole is and turn my ass in the hole and just like mirror him instead of trying to road hog and go and drive dudes off the ball, hit linebackers and move them, not just stalemate them. Like, that doesn't work at the next level either. You try and stalemate a guy at the next level, you're getting steamrolled backwards, right? So anyone that's just trying to like position block or be a finesse blocker in the interior in college, not working, dude. I need, I need a road grader. I need a dude that's not afraid to get dirty and get after it. Mm-hmm. That was a lot of just great football jargon right there. It's fine. It's our life, I want to commend Dude, you. Dude, we break it down man. all the time. That's, I mean, it's great stuff. That's, right a, there. that's what gives us our edge when we're watching tape and finding guys that maybe are under the radar a little bit, but you see the tools and you can see it, and eventually the NFL catches up to it. But it's just part of what we do. You guys let me be a fly on the wall. Like when we were first putting this podcast together, I think it was last May, and you let me just kind of sit in there while you guys mm -hmm. did film review. Can I do that again? Can Absolutely. I just sit there? Oh, yeah. and I mean, it's a Boone and I were on Zoom for two hours yesterday watching tape. Just with the guys? With no, the, just, no just us. Just you guys. Hey, we're trying in the to recruit. recruiting season, right? You're already back into recruiting guys for next year. Yeah. It's wild. We should, yeah, we should do a dive into like that whole, to whatever extent you guys are comfortable talking about, just the process of building your companies, and we oh, should do sure. an episode on that sometime. We didn't get approval kind of dies down some guys. Yeah, we'll ask some guys. We'll ask some guys, but I bet you we could do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be kind of fun. Do like a like a reality show episode. We'll show you why we recruited who we recruited. Yeah, that'd be great. For sure. Yeah. So, all right, that's a wrap here on dumb football questions. O line committee. Don't forget about your O line committee merch at olinecommittee.com. You can follow us on any of the social media platforms, and uh, click that like button and the subscribe button on the O line committee. YouTube channel. We have a film breakdown this week. We're going to actually record that here as soon as we shut these mics off. And the question is, has Jordan Love become a top 10 quarterback in the NFL? Mm. We'll look at a five-week stretch where he started to figure it out for the first time in like November, December. So be on the lookout for that. All right, boys. Good stuff here today. O-Line Committee, your favorite offensive line lifestyle podcast. <laughs>